Welcome to another episode of Healthy Way Podcast, where we discuss health issues ranging from physical, mental, emotional, as well as current fat. Today, we're talking about surviving health crisis, a survivor story. And please allow me to introduce you to Tamika Hardin. Thank you for joining us, Tamika. I appreciate it. And Thank Tamika, for having me. Thank you. So Tamika is a certified fitness trainer, a life coach, and an actual coronavirus survivor. And that's correct. Yes. Yes. And I guess for a lot of people, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, to this, sorry, one of the reasons why I want to actually do this topic is, you know, get people that have gone through certain health crises and let them tell their stories. So for viewers and um, as well as listeners, why do you think it's important for you to tell your story? Well, in every story, there's a message and there's something to share. There's information to share. Hopefully there is something encouraging to share. So me sharing my message is really for me to use my voice to encourage people, uh, to motivate people during this time, to be support and to empathize with people because we're also hurting. Many of us are hurting and affected by this. So just letting people know you're not alone and you know someone is here that can relate to what you're going through. I like that. And I think it's really a good message because it's true. Some people think they're alone. And you know, why right now we're all isolated, we have to stay inside. So hearing your story and hearing what you may have gone through helps anybody who's dealing with any healthcare crisis, as well as maybe family members that know that they're dealing with someone that has coronavirus, that, you know, there's people out there that's gone through it and survived like you have, correct? Yes. I guess then another, sometimes you always often hear that one of the first reaction is fear, right? And okay. then what was your first reaction when you were told that you had the virus? And how did you get there over the initial reaction? My first reaction when I was told I had the virus was I had had the virus for about a week. I had symptoms already for about a week before, maybe a little longer, but at least a week before I had gotten tested. And, and about a week later is when I found out I tested positive. So there was some time that I was fighting through the symptoms and I didn't know what I had. Wow. Yes. So for about a week to 10 days, I was fighting COVID-19 and I wasn't aware that I was fighting COVID-19. I thought it was the flu. And as things progressed, I began to realize that it was much more than the flu. And then my test results tested, I tested positive and then I knew exactly that it was. So when I initially found out about it, my symptoms had begun to slowly uh, digress. And I began to slowly get my strength back. So as I found out that I had it and I tested positive, at that moment, I was well abreast with what was happening on the news, what was happening around me. I was well aware that people that I knew was losing loved ones, people were dying, people were in ICU, on ventilators, uh, you know, fighting for their lives. So the moment that I found out I tested positive, and I was still well enough uh, to know cognitively, cognizantly that I tested positive. I knew that I could make it through this um, because at that point, it could have been a lot worse for me. I could have not been here to tell this story. I could have been in ICU at that point. And the fact that I wasn't gave me motivation to know that I'll be okay. Like I can fight through this like I would any other obstacle in my life and that's the way I, I begin to take it on and i respect that because again like a fitness um, fitness pro um, profession you know our idea is that we're healthy right like you know we'll fight things off like everything will be okay but then you know you have to get that test and then you realize okay some of the training for yourself kicked in and you yes. knew you can go yeah so that's good and i guess um let's step back a bit like when you were going through those times what some of the major um, challenges did you face that should be, people, people should know when dealing with any form of health crisis and how did you overcome those crises? Well, those feelings in a sense. For me and the advice that I always give as a life coach, as a fitness professional, it starts in the mind first. Okay. If you feel defeated, whether you have actually been defeated or not as of yet, if you feel that you're defeated, it is going to lessen your ability to fight. It is going to lessen your physical ability to fight because mind and body is directly connected. Sure. So mentally, I began to take it on as I would take on any obstacle. 
as I would coach myself through any obstacle, whether it required tears and tissues <laughs> and you know, pep talks, whatever it takes, that's the way that I take on a challenge. And for me to know, listen, I made it this far, you know, with COVID-19, I made it to the point where I didn't know I had it. Now I know I have it. And I have fight left in me. I know that I can fight through this. I know that I'll be well. And I just began to tell myself that mentally. The moment I felt better, uh, I went right back to what I do on a regular basis to keep myself well. And that is physical movement. The first day that I felt well enough, I went and I, ex I exercised for 20 minutes. I was lightheaded. I wasn't myself. I knew my body wasn't 100% ready yet, but I began to just do what I knew would help me, like just taking care of my health and physical movement. And that's the way I took it on as I would anything. Okay. So I appreciate that. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, what you said was, you know, once you get over that, go back to being normal, try something, try bring back your normal, normalcy back in your life. So I guess, as a personal trainer and life coach, um, you help people deal with physical challenges to reach their goals as well as personal life challenges. What methods did you use that would help anyone else in any situation like this? Well, not specifically COVID-19, but any health crisis per se. My best advice for anyone dealing with a health crisis is to seek support and any uh, help that you, you can get because support is essential, it's important. Support will help you uh, fight through it. And after seeking support, I recommend just working on mental health, having the right mindset to be able to take on what's ahead. Because it, like I said, you know, before, and I'll say it several times again, it's all, it starts with your mindset. So seeking support that you need, the knowledge that you need, whatever help you need, and then working on the challenge at hand, acknowledging what it is, starting in the mind saying, you know, things like, I got this, you know, I can make it through this. I've made it through things like this before. Just mentally preparing yourself because think some, a virus such as COVID-19 or any life obstacles typically is to knock you down, right? Yes. So you, you have to kind of start gearing up, start like, you know, putting on your armor and, and being ready to fight. So I would say start with working on the mindset and everything else to follow. And then that's really good. Like what happens? I'm, I'm wondering, like, I'm not sure. Um, did you have any family support? Cause like for a lot of people that feel scared and hopeless, like, do they, do you feel like, you know, should they lean on their family and they don't have any family or friends around them? How do they deal with any, any health crisis or some of your advice you can give them? Well, my family and friends did support me. They were there for me, you know, uh, if I needed someone to talk to, to encourage me. Right now, my best advice is if, you know, rely on your family or friends that you do have. Virtually, we're able to connect with everyone via Zoom and FaceTime and things like that. So utilizing the support of the people who love you and in the event that you do not have anyone that you can count on, there are many virtual options as well. There are therapists who have taken it virtually. Everything is confidential. So right now it is essential, it is important that we all seek the help that we need. Don't be afraid to need help during this time. This is a crisis and we are all going through it in one way or the other. So don't be afraid, seek the help you need because it's only gonna help you. It's true. And then I guess for you, like it also affects your mental health. So, you know, as you said, anybody, there's online virtual assistance and, you know, if somebody wanted to maybe possibly follow your journey, you know, find that you're very, this, your story is very motivating. How can they um, follow your journey? Are you on any social media platforms that they can look, search you for? Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, because of this experience, I am broadening my reach virtually. I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. And because my gym is closed down, I was forced to take it virtually. And I've learned so much. I mean, as a millennial, I thought I <laughs> some things uh, about technology, but there's it's a lot different. It's a, it's a different world now. It really it's is. a whole different ballgame. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about it because it's allowed me to reach more people. So on social media, I uh, on Instagram, it's body by Tamika. That's B-O-D-Y-B-Y and my first name, 
T-A-M-I-K-A. And it's the same social media handle for Instagram, uh, for Facebook, and uh, what else do I have? YouTube. And right now I am teaching virtually on Zoom and anything else that I can get my hands on to just broaden my reach. That is my goal. And I can respect that. And I, I am, I am going to have her contact details. So if you guys did not catch it or you did not see it, I will be writing it down for everybody else. I guess for everybody that's not listening out, hearing, hearing you and they're like motivated and they're saying, okay, what is next for you to Like, what are you, I know you have a lot and then you're a very, you know, motivational woman. And like, I respect you. You seem like, you know, you have a head on straight and you've gone through this whole crisis. So what is next for Tamika basically is what I'm asking. Well, oof. <laughs> I, I have so much that I want to say to answer that question. Um, long story short, it took a lot of courage for me to start Body by Tamika three years ago. And it is one of the hardest things that I've done in life, but it is one of the best decisions I've ever made. And working to build the confidence to start my own business and having the faith that I'll actually make money. Um, now that I've got past that obstacle, my goal is to help people, right? But surviving COVID-19 gives you a greater sense of appreciation it has given me a greater appreciation for life. Um, I had a moment where I had to say to myself, you made it through this. And unfortunately, not everyone has. So with that being said, I'm all about turning things around and, and taking the positive from it. I feel as if I was given another chance at my goals. You know, not to get emotional. This is the first interview that made me want to cry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but it, I feel as if I have been given another chance to fulfill my purpose. And my purpose is to help people. So that is what's next for Body by Tamika. And sorry I had to cry during our interview. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. It, it, that is what's next. I just... I just want to work harder. Uh, I want to help more people. I am grateful for platforms such as yours to allow me to get my message out and to help people. That's all I want to do because what helped me fight COVID-19 is my lifestyle. For over 15 years, I've practiced a lifestyle of positive mental health, of physical fitness, body movement, proper nutrition, and because of my lifestyle, I am positive that it helped me in fighting COVID-19. I, I was able to fight through a virus in about 10 to 14 days that had people in ICU for 30 days to almost two months. And some not coming back from it, right? Yes, yes. So with that being said, I feel and I know that I have information to share. I am talented in, in the way that I do what I do because I know how to get people who truly hate exercising. <laughs> I mean, I, that is really, if I had to identify what, um, how do I stand out from my counterparts, it would be my ability to get people to enjoy fitness that never liked it ever before or felt as if it, it wasn't something important enough or that they could even find the time to make. I'm good at that. So the people who are suffering the most are the people who A, may not have the appropriate resources, may not know how to get started. I can relate to those people because of my past. And I also know how to help people like that get motivated. So I just want to use my talents to help more people boost their immune systems, get stronger. So in the event we are faced with something like this again, hopefully God willing, if we are down the line, they'll be able to say, you know what, the lifestyle that I've just led for five years, three years, two years, whatever it was, has improved my vital signs, has improved my medical reports, and I feel strong enough to fight this and anything else that may be thrown at me. I respect that. And 
I know you may come in behind not crying, like, but you showing your emotion shows that, you know, this is, this is not a gimmick for you. Like, you know, it's in the heart. And when someone, when you can tell that it's in the heart, someone's out there to really make a difference. And once people see that, then they can relate because you're like, okay, she really cares. Yes. And I think that's what has helped me be successful thus far. Because as I mentioned, you know, starting your own business and walking out on faith, that can take a number of years to some people never gain the confidence to do it. And if, you know, they have the passion, they have to the drive. It's something that they love, but it's that fear, yes. you know? Fear of and, stopping from anything. Yes. And, and for me, that was the first step, putting that aside. But what has helped me to be successful, thank God, is the fact that people do see my passion and my dedication. And it's not all about, you know, making a living or making money. Uh, those things are important, obviously. But for me, it's about helping people. I appreciate that. And I'm, I want to say thank you for taking the time to speak with me you know, telling your story, and I just, and you know, I'm wishing you nothing but health for you and your family, you know. Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us today on our weekly episode of Health Your Way podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share with others, and please feel free to comment below and ask any questions on topics we discuss as well as future topics you'd like to hear about. Have a happy and healthy week, and be sure to tune in next week for the next episode on our Health Your Way podcast.